Uh, we'll move back to football now because it's, uh, as we've been discussing all week, sporting boss Ruben Amarim looks set to become the new Man United manager. It comes, of course, after Eric Ten Hag was sacked earlier in the week with Ruben Van Nistelrooy having been placed in temporary charge. The club want him in charge for Sunday's game against Chelsea with Van Nistelrooy looking after tonight's home game in the Carabao Cup against Leicester. It's live on Talk Sport 2. Let's cross over now to Old Trafford to get a sense of the atmosphere as we say how to Talk Sport's chief football correspondent, Alex Crook. Crookie D, good evening to you. Good evening. Welcome to rainy Manchester. Uh, usual weather as Ruben Van Nistelrooy takes charge. Maybe for the only time, although it's open to debate if Ruben Amarim will be in situ in time for Sunday's game uh, against Chelsea here. The latest information I have from Portugal uh, is that Sporting Lisbon ideally want him to stay in charge for their next three matches. That would take them up until the November international break. Obviously, United want him in situ sooner. Negotiations continue. I read actually moments ago, I say moments ago, about half an hour ago, that uh, Sporting want another, on top of the 8 million they'll be getting already, another 4.2 million to let him go before the 30 month, 30 day period that they think he's going to have to stay. Is that So United could be looking at a package of around about 12 million pounds for compensation for him. Well, that's what they're haggling over at the moment. The release clause is straightforward. It is 10 million euros, so around about 8.3 million pounds. The stumbling block is that as part of that release clause, Amarin has to serve a 30-day notice period. Now, usually, I think most clubs, once a manager has decided he's leaving, and we reported a couple of days ago the personal terms were already agreed between Amarin and Manchester United, they would probably just want the situation drawn a line under and he would move on. But as I say, Sporting, for reasons known only to themselves, are digging their heels in a bit. Do they genuinely want him to stay in charge for these games, including, intriguingly, at home to Manchester City? in the Champions League next week or are they simply trying to get more money out of Manchester United my my guess would be it's probably the latter but yeah. as I say negotiations go on it, it won't only be Amarin who's making that journey from Lisbon to Manchester my understanding is that up to five members of his backroom staff including his long-term assistant Carlos Fernandez, could also uh, well will also be following him and you have to raise the question mark what does that mean for Ruud van Nistelrooy someone who only came back to United turned down the possibility to be a number one at Burnley to assist Eric Ten Hag. He's obviously in charge tonight. He's taking the press conference as it stands before they play Chelsea here on Sunday. But will he have a job once Amarin gets his feet under the table? I think PR-wise, Ineos will be well served to find a role for him. Yeah, Cricky, I mean, I, I don't think you'll probably survive, but I can understand what you're saying. But listen, you're a United fan and he's a United fan. Do you think it's really positive, though, by Manchester United, the fact that they've sacked Eric Ten Hag and so quickly now they've they've turned to Amarim and they've gone, do you know what, this is the man we want to take us forward. Rather than we saw in the summer, them scratching around trying to find somebody to take charge of Manchester United, do you think it's good and positive that they've got a clear plan in place and they've gone, bang, Amarim, he's the guy that we want? Yes, I do. They've moved decisively and I think you can question if they moved decisively enough when it came to Eric Ten Hag. But they had no excuse really and I've been saying this on TalkSport for the past couple of days. They had to have a number one target in mind because we know they spoke to various managers, including the likes of Roberto De Zerbi and Thomas Tuchel in the summer, when maybe they contemplated getting rid of Ten Hag. We know there was a, a lengthy board meeting during the last international break earlier this month when they contemplated his future and obviously would have discussed the potential replacement. So it would have been unforgivable, really, if they didn't have a number one target. Yes, they've honed in on him quickly. They've got the, the contract terms in place. He's going to triple his wages, by the way, making this move to United. So he's going to do very well out of it financially, Ruben Amarine. But they had to be decisive. And I think ideally they still want him to be in charge this weekend. It's interesting, speaking to Manchester United fans before the game, I've just been over at Hotel Football. The guy in the door there, O'Neill, runs his own podcast for the United fans. He's always got plenty to say. And he made the point that the match-going Manchester United fans have been really loyal to Eric Ten Hag. You won't have heard too many people inside Old Trafford calling for his head. But actually, he felt like that changed during that West Ham game at the weekend. And it changed because of the body language of Eric Ten Hag, because he looked like mm. he had no more fight left in him. And I think Manchester United fans felt the same. Quickly, listen, thanks for coming on. Just before I let you go, were you told by someone to stand there? You weren't allowed to stand any anywhere else, or did you choose that spot? I was told that you wanted to get me in front of a burger van, Andy. Yeah, nothing so, to do with me. Yeah. Listen, <laughs> if you're having your dinner early, that's nothing to do with me, Crookie, all right? 
That's got your fingerprints all over it. And I've already had my dinner, by the way, and it wasn't a burger. I might have one later. Did you go to Lou Macari's chip shop then, just round the corner? <laughs> that is a popular haunt of mine, yeah, I've got to say. I'm sure it is. Crooky, listen, keep up the, the good work. I'm guessing you're going to be inside Old Trafford for tonight's game. I, well, I am, actually. It was pre-planned. I've got the four kids in tow tonight. And I've got to say, uh, up until... Uh, Ten Hag was fired. I was dreading it a little bit, but I'm looking forward to it, to, to it tonight. I think the fans are going to be up for it. They're going to give Ruud van Nistelrooy plenty of backing. Mm. And I'm expecting the United players, as often happens when a manager departs, to come on and put on a really good show. I think they're going to win, and I think they're going to win handsomely. Uh, fingers crossed. Crookie, for the time, and enjoy the evening. Thanks for coming on, pal. Cheers, guys. There you go, the wonderful Alex Crook, talk sports uh, football correspondent, head, chief, football correspondent, wherever you want, the big dog. Talk Sport Drive with Andy Goldstein. Monday to Friday afternoon from 4 on AM, on DAB, via the Talk Sport app and on your smart speaker. Talk Sport.